Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to vitality and, vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you wanna get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Doc Wallach, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls uh, in our second segment today, at the end of our second segment today, so we don't have to leave so many people on hold. Please call in early. 844-236-6010 if you have questions about the longevity products, skincare, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about in the newspaper, something somebody may have told you. Or if... Uh, you just want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. I blog on pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com, and we update them with news stories as well. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team from the websites, or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and sign up right off the website, or uh, right off the phone, I should say. Okay, let's see. We're talking skin lightening. We've been talking about lipofusion for the last few days, the last few weeks. Now I want to start talking about really serious pigmentation or a real pigmentation, skin pigmentation. It's one of the most troubling conditions that uh, people have and, and troubling for not just for patients but also for dermatologists because dermatologists don't really know what to do with hyperpigmentation. I'm going to tell you what causes hyperpigmentation here in a little bit but just so you know it's not surprise surprise a topical condition it shows up on the skin but it's not caused by anything on it's not caused by the skin per se although obviously it's showing up on the skin it's an internal condition it's a blood condition no surprise there all health challenges are or most health challenges anyway are related to dirty blood it's called technically melasma that's the technical term hyperpigmentation is the colloquial colloquial phrase hyper pigmentation, melasma. Melasma, hyperpigmentation, is made up of melanin, unlike lipofusion, which is a complex of a bunch of different stuff, a bunch of different elements, proteins and fats and sugars from cells. Melasma or hyperpigmentation is just pretty much pigment. In the skincare world, this condition of hyperpigmentation or uneven pigmentation is, is not only a major complaint, it's a major complaint, make no mistake about it, but it's so misunderstood. Most doctors will tell you that the causes are unknown, or they'll blame uh, their favorite skin health scapegoat, the sun. And it's because of this kind of silliness, this medical ignorance, that we really don't know how to treat melasma. We really don't know how to treat hyperpigmentation without drugs. All our treatments for dark darkening, uh, for lightening the skin, for lightening dark spots, involve drugs and involve medical procedures. 
But as with everything that gets messed up in the body, there's always going to be causes. Just because a doctor doesn't know the cause doesn't mean there's no causes. Doesn't mean that you can't do anything to address it once you understand what the causes are. There's always going to be things we could do, no matter what our health challenges are, there's always going to be things we could do from a lifestyle and from a nutritional standpoint to improve the condition. And the same is true about hyperpigmentation or melasma. Millions of women spend millions and millions of dollars on cosmetics and on dermatological consultations and estheticians and skincare procedures to try to get rid of this problem of hyperpigmentation. And melasma is particularly common in women. And that's a clue right there. You know, a lot of health issues are more commonly found in the female gender than in the male. Autoimmune diseases, for example, way more women get autoimmune diseases than men. Thyroid problems, way more women suffer from thyroid issues than men. Cellulite is largely a, a female condition. What do all these conditions have in common? The hormone estrogen. And guess what? Melasma or hyperpigmentation is no different. Melasma and hyperpigmentation, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, are related to the hormone estrogen. Pregnant women uh, know good and well. They'll get something called the mask of pregnancy. It's hyperpigmentation, melasma around the eyes. But it can happen anywhere on the body in pregnant women. It can happen when you're taking the birth control pill. Both of these uh, conditions, both of these uh, elements involve excess estrogen or involve the hormone estrogen. When you're pregnant, you're producing lots of estrogen. If you're on the birth control pill, you're taking estrogen. If you ask any dermatologist, if they're honest with you, they're, they're going to tell you it's really tough to treat melasma. It's really tough to treat hyperpigmentation. And the reason it's so tough is because we're not thinking about the chemistry of pigmentation. We're just looking at it as a skin issue. No matter what your doctor tells you, if you understand biochemistry, you're going to know why you're pigmenting. And don't blame the sun. It's not the sun's fault. Tanning is, and pigmentation can be triggered by the sun. That's true. But in a healthy body, the pigmentation that's related to the sun is going to be even, like a tan. It's not going to be uneven splotches. Melasma doesn't occur in children. Children go out in the sun, they don't get melasma. What is it? The, why don't kids get it? Why don't young adults get it? Melasma is largely a condition that occurs as we get older and as our bodies break down. That's a clue right there for you. It's related to bodily breakdown. And no one just has melasma. The skin is a window to the biochemistry of the body. When we speak skin, when we understand skin, when we understand what the skin is telling us, and this is what we've been talking about now for the last couple of months, how to speak skin. If you've been listening to The Bright Side for the last few months, you now know how to speak skin. And you now know that when something shows up on the skin, that it's related to something inside the body. You don't need to have an allergy test. You don't need diagnostics. You don't need any medicalization to treat a skin issue. You need no medicalization to treat skin issues. You know, doctoring is not something that I'm fond about, fond of, if you, as most of you guys know if you've been listening to this program, but dermatology is the silliest aspect of all of medicine. By the time you see something on the skin, it's over, guys. Dermatologists treat the end, the end result. By the time something's on the skin, whether it's a zit or whether it's a rash or whether it's hyperpigmentation, it's done. That's the end. You can't treat the end. You're not going to get better if you treat the hyperpigmentation. You're not going to get better if you treat the rash or the pimple. That's over. Dermatology treats the end result of a biochemical breakdown. Is that what we want? Is that, is that the kind of health care we want? You don't need a dermatologist for any health, skin health condition. None. Why, did you, why do you suppose that the only thing you're going to get from a dermatologist is an antibiotic or a steroid cream? That's it. Or maybe hydroquinone, which we'll talk about here in a minute. That's it. There's not much they can give you because there's not much they can do because by the time you see the rash or the eczema or whatever it is, it's done. If you go to a dermatologist for your melasma, for your hyperpigmentation, they can't do anything for it except for kill the cells that make the pigment. And that's really the main strategy, believe it or not. The main strategy for hyperpigmentation treatment, the medical strategy for hyperpigmentation treatment is to kill the cells that make the pigment. Who the heck thinks that's a good idea? And if not killing the cells, that takes a while maybe, poisoning the cells that make the pigment. What, what, what? It's craziness, you guys. The main drug that's used to, to poison these pigment-making cells is called hydroquinone. And you better believe this stuff is nasty, nasty, nasty. 
We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. And take your calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We are back on the bright side. Got a new drug that just got approved for, for heart disease. It's supposed to be a blockbuster, according to Novartis, the company that makes this stuff. It's called Entresto, or LCZ-696. That's, a, that's the uh, ex, uh, investigational name of this stuff, Entresto. It's actually a combination of two nasty drugs, two nasty blood pressure-lowering drugs that poison the heart and the kidneys. That's the uh, doctor's strategy for taking care of heart disease is to poison the heart and poison the kidneys. This thing's no different in Tresto. Used to treat heart failure. It's uh, uh, related to some of these drugs that work with uh, uh, an enzyme called ACE, A-C-E. You probably heard of these things called ACE inhibitors if you're, uh, if you're taking a, a blood pressure drug. Anyway, a new drug for heart failure, Entresto. I'm telling you, man, as if we need another drug, right? And this isn't even a new drug. It's just a combination of two, two already existing drugs. All right, anyway, we're talking uh, hyperpigmentation here. We're talking uh, skin health. We've been talking skin health now for a couple months. If you've got dark spots, please understand it's an internal problem. There are four major reasons why the skin pigments successively, and the sun is not one of them. There's nothing, very little a uh, doctor can do. Hydroquinone is pretty much the only thing a doctor can do to help uh, it doesn't even, it doesn't prevent the formation of pigment, or I should say it doesn't prevent the causes of hyperpigmentation. What it does is kills or poisons the cells that make pigment. Stuff's called hydroquinone, and it is nasty, nasty stuff. I used to have to compound a 20% hydroquinone uh, solution for a plastic surgeon. I used to buy it by the quart, and uh, he was using it in plastic surgery, or uh, for, his, uh, for his patients after they had plastic surgery. Sometimes the skin will pigment after, after plastic surgery, you'll get excess of pigment. So he, he wanted me to make this 20% hydroquinone solution. I was making it for him for years, and I hated making this stuff. Charged him a lot of money for it, but man, did I hate making that stuff. I used to have to put it under a hood, a ventilation hood, and I'd have to wear a surgical mask because the stuff was so darn toxic. I still get a headache, even, uh, uh, even with the mask and even with the hood. Hydroquinone is so toxic, it's not even allowed in the prescription pharmacopoeia of many countries, especially European countries. The FDA considers it a, quote, possible human carcinogen. It's very similar to dry cleaning solvents. It's very similar to parabens. If you've heard of parabens and all the issues with paraben, people are all up in arms about parabens and no parabens and parabens causing cancer. Well, guess what? Parabens are used in skincare products in 0.1% concentrations. Hydroquinone, which is very similar to parabens, is used in 4% concentrations. That's, uh, uh, what is that, 40 times the amount that you'll get that uh, uh, parabens are used. Nobody's complaining about hydroquinone. Everybody's complaining about parabens. You don't want to use this stuff. Unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do topically for, for pigmentation. If you're not using hydroquinone, there's a couple peptides that may work a little bit. But there's a really cool vitamin that you can use for pigmentation. And you guys probably know what that is. Topical vitamin. It's called retinol. Yes, retinol. Vitamin A. As if, as if you don't have enough benefits from using topical vitamin A. Skin, uh, uh, skin healing benefits, collagen benefits, anti-wrinkle benefits, anti-glycation or sugaring benefits. One of the ways the skin ages is it sugars, it caramelizes. And retinol or retinoic acid, vitamin A, are anti-sugaring, anti-glycating. Anti retinol is great for acne skin. Improves blemish skin. Retinol is amazing, amazing stuff. And guess what? It's great for hyperpigmentation. We'll be talking about that in the coming days. If you're interested in a superior retinol product, check out my Truth Retinol Gel 5.0%. Yes, 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere, folks. And it's amazingly effective for hyperpigmentation. Go to truthtreatments.com. Michael Jackson had a condition called vitiligo. The singer Michael Jackson had a condition called vitiligo. Some of you guys know what that is. Vitiligo is when your skin completely turns white. It's an autoimmune disease where the pigment-making cells get killed off. Autoimmune diseases are when the body's immune system targets parts of the body. In the case of vitiligo, it targets the pigment-making cells, and you end up with white splotches on the skin. Well, Michael Jackson, or his dermatologist anyway, had this theory. If they could make his skin completely white, the vitiligo wouldn't show up. 
or the vitiligo wouldn't be as obvious. So they made his skin completely white. How do they do it? With hydroquinone, super high concentrations of hydroquinone. If you use just low concentrations of hydroquinone and you, and you take time off and you don't use it for long periods of time, you just maybe affect the pigment making cells and you'll suppress pigmentation. But if you use it a lot and you use it for a long period of time, you'll completely destroy your pigment making cells and you'll end up completely white. That's why if you're using a hydroquinone product, you always want to take time off, maybe like a, a month or two months on, a month or two months off. Now, you're not going to get irreversible skin lightening with a 4% hydroquinone product. Michael Jackson was using a 20% hydroquinone uh, uh, product and he used it for a long period of time. For, pretty much you're only going to get a 4% hydroquinone from the pharmacy unless you have a compounding pharmacist who can make stronger, uh, a stronger concentration. And a 4% hydroquinone product is not really, it's probably not going to cause permanent lightning a la Michael Jackson. But do you really want to put any amount of a toxic carcinogen like hydroquinone on your skin, 1%, 2%, any amount. I don't think so. That stuff is nasty, nasty, nasty. And hyperpigmentation isn't a skin issue anyway. It's an internal issue. There's four major causes of hyperpigmentation, four major causes of melasma. I told you one of them is the hormone estrogen. But there's three other ones, and we'll talk about those tomorrow as we continue talking melasma, and we talk real strategies for eliminating hyperpigmentation, preventing hyperpigmentation, and getting rid of your hyperpigmentation if it's already there. There are things you can do to get rid of your hyperpigmentation if it's already there, and they don't involve hydroquinone. We'll do that. Uh, we'll continue that, uh, our discussion on that tomorrow. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have a couple, a couple lines open for you. Try to call in early so we can get to all our calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Barbara in California, what's going on? Good morning, Ben. Good morning. I'm calling, good morning. I'm calling for a gentleman who had surgery last December that removed 30 inches of his intestine okay. after it became twisted and died. Okay. Um, he since, he's lost 15 pounds that he's not been able to regain. Okay. He can't seem to regain his strength. His diet's pretty much gluten-free. He does eat a little bread, but mostly fruits, salads, and nuts, a little chicken, some eggs. He's yeah, taking... let's, let's hang on. I'm gonna, let, let's hang on right there, because when I hear that phrase, the, the hairs on the back of my neck go up, the phrase gluten-free. And, and what you're saying is the, re, the, the rest of your sentence is why I hate that phrase gluten-free, okay? Gluten is one of a zillion problems. And you mentioned nuts. You said fruits, nuts, and what else did you say? Um, some salad and a little chicken and some eggs. Every um, one of those um, things is he's, every he's every so one he's, of those things. Hang on a second, ma'am. Every one of those things is potentially just as bad as gluten. Eggs, seeds, fruits, nuts, all of it. So what good is gluten-free if he has a fruit problem or salad problem or any of those other problems? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to your question here in a second, but I just want to point out to the listeners, not necessarily to you, Barbara, but to you as well, uh, but to the listeners especially, gluten-free is a cliché. It's jargon. It's, it's a way that we get talked to like we're babies, like we're infants. Don't say, I'm gluten-free or, or we're going gluten-free. Say grain-free. Say flour free, say processed food free, say bread free, but not gluten free. All right, Barbara, I'm, I'll, I didn't mean to rip, rip into you there, Barbara. So I'll let you continue when we come back from our break and we'll help you with your friend and his intestine because there is lots you could do. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products that you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, we're talking to Barbara in California. Barbara, I didn't mean to go off on a rant there. I apologize. So your friend has uh, lost uh, 30, uh, two, two, a little over two feet, two and a half feet of his intestines, right? Uh, right. You know you're saying? Large Can intestine. Can I just tell you that he takes Xanax and Colazepam? Well, none of that's helping him, that's for sure. It definitely doesn't help the 
doesn't help the intestine. Those are uh, well-known constipating agents, both of those oh, drugs. Oh, I'm not constipated. Oh, he's right there. I'm sorry. I was going to I am you. on here. Yes, I'd like to talk to you. Okay, well. Okay, let's let him talk. Let's let him talk. Let's let him talk. Okay, go ahead, all right, sir. All right. I don't have any problem except I can't sleep at night. That's why I take Xanax and I have restless leg syndrome, so I take <laughs> clonazepam. Those are the okay. only two prescription okay, drugs. Okay, so that let I me ex let me take anything else. Okay, sir. Hang on, sir. What's your name, by the way? George Yenny. Okay, George, here's the deal. You think you don't have any problems, but you've got many problems. And I'm not saying this to be mean to you or to be harsh to you. I want to help you. But if you think you don't have any problems, then I can't help you. If you have restless leg syndrome, number one, that's a sign of nutritional deficiency, major nutritional deficiency. If you can't sleep at night, that's a sign of a body in distress. Your body thinks there's an emergency and it's not letting you sleep. So what you're doing is you're dumbing down your body. To, you're shutting down your body artificially with the drugs. What you want to do is figure out what the distress is. But if you think you're okay, you're not going to be able to find what the distress is. That's just, I'm just pointing that out to you. Here's what you need to do. Number one, without, which part of the intestine do they take out? Do you know? Yes. The which, central uh, small intestine. Okay. Right there in the middle of my stomach. Right in the middle. That's where you're absorbing your nutrition. So you have major issues with nutritional deficiency by definition without that section of the intestine. So you're going to need liquid nutrients as much as you can put in your system. One of the best things you could do is something that we talk about in this program all the time, and if, uh, it doesn't sound like you've listened to us before, so I'm going to tell you, it's called bone soup. It's where you take a chicken, a, uh, a good clean bird, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, and you turn it into soup. You drop it into a pot of boiling water and make soup out of it. And the protein from the, uh, the, protein from the, uh, the chicken will go off into the liquid, and you'll get liquid protein. It's an amazing tonic, and it's especially important for people who have lost part of their intestines or they're having nutrient uh, malabsorption issues. They're not absorbing their nutrients. If you put vegetables in there towards the end of the cooking process, you don't want to do it too early, but towards the end of the cooking process, you'll get all the nutrients from the veggies. You have to be using liquid nutrition. Now, Barbara said something very troubling to me. You probably heard, George, uh, that you're eating lots of fruits and, and um, I think she said uh, nuts. Fruits and nuts and eggs, all of those can be very problematic for you. And so you want to be, well, a lot of reasons. I've been eating First, them since I was a kid. I well, you also, now, wait a minute, all right, George. all right, listen, George, I, please, I, you got to calm down, my friend. You've been eating them since you were a kid, but look what it's done to you. All right? You have part of your body hacked out because it was deformed. So who knows? I'm not saying it was the cause of it, but it could have easily been the cause of it. Those are all problematic foods for some people. Eggs are, uh, eggs are a big, uh, a well-known food allergen. Nuts are, food, are a, a well-known allergen as well. Nuts are, uh, uh, and then uh, you said fruits, is, fruits are big, big, big problem for the small intestine for a lot of people. You might want to look into something called SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is a very good possibility for you. And that can cause problems sleeping, and that can cause problems with restless legs as well. Uh, so, uh, and SIBO is intimately connected to excess ingestion of fruit sugar. So you could have had problems your whole life from those kinds of foods. I, I don't know if, I'm not saying you did, but you could have. So you got to watch the foods. As far as the weight gain, that's malnutrition and malnourishment. So you got to do liquid nutrients. Soups are great. Vegetable juices. Get a Vitamix. If you're going to do salads, do uh, uh, instead of salads, do juices. Take your salad, drop it in a Vitamix with water, and grind it all up. You'll get the fiber. You'll get all the good stuff, but it'll be much easier for your body to handle the nutrients. You may not be getting the nutritional value out of the salad without, without the central part of your small intestine. So you, it's great that you're eating salads, although you could have uh, allergies or intolerances to specific veggies. But in general, it's great that you're eating veggies, but grind them up. Uh, vegetable soups, vegetable juices, bone soup. We have a product called the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You definitely want to be on that. And you want to sip on it slowly. If you do it too much, you're going to have the runs. I think you said that you – do you have diarrhea or loose stools, I, George? Oh, I go four times a day now. Are they – is it like loose? I don't know. No, they're not loose. They're regular? Regular. Like, regu like regular, you know, shaped like your intestine? Everything kind of goes through me so fast. Because yes, it, it that's the problem. That's the problem. It's called mal you're not absorbing. It's called malabsorption. You're not absorbing. That's okay. That's okay. I understand that. I understand. Okay, good. 
So what we want to do is we want to get you liquid nutrition so that you get as much, as, uh, uh, makes it easier for your body to absorb those nutrients. You might want to up your fiber content, grind up some, if you can do flax seeds, grind up some flax seeds and, and put them in water and drink them, uh, drink them down. Uh, you might to get a little bit more fiber in your diet. Uh, and then bentonite clay may also help slow down the release of, uh, slow, down your, uh, uh, slow down your bowel movements a little bit. Uh, a, sp a spoonful of bentonite clay in water it tastes great too, and it's a good source of minerals. Uh, definitely, 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 you need probiotics or good bacteria. Now, you can do a supplemental form of probiotics, which I highly recommend. The Biolumin Nightly Essence is my favorite. Uh, in addition to that, you can do probiotic enriched foods, and that means kefir and miso and tempeh and uh, uh, pickled beets and anything that's pickled or fermented is going to help you with bacteria in the gut. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation and make your own sauerkraut and make your own fermented food. Uh, a couple other things that you can use, something called prebiotics. There's a product called Inulin, I-N-U-L-I-N, prebiotics that help support the probiotics. And you can get Inulin supplements and that will help too. And then apple cider vinegar after all your meals will help I you with that. your... I drink that. Good for you. Organic apple cider vinegar, yeah. and then use some use some digestive enzymes with your apple cider that. vinegar. Good deal. Make sure you're doing the apple cider vinegar with the uh, uh, the digestive enzymes and the apple cider vinegar together with your meals. Uh, the gluten free is problematic because you could be having problems with other. Of other entities that are other uh, chemical entities that are found in flour and processed foods that are not gluten. So you may be going gluten free, but you may be getting other things that are causing a problem. What you want to do is you want to connect up the foods that are causing the digestive problems and then eliminate those foods and then liquid nutrition and probiotics. And it's absolutely vital, George, I'm telling you, because of your, your malnourishment and malabsorption, it's absolutely vital that you get on a nutritional supplement program. If you want to use the longevity supplements, which I recommend, you can go to my website, but whatever it is, you do get on a nutritional supplement program. The restless leg syndrome and the problems sleeping at night are classic signs of a body that is in distress. And nutritional deficiencies, which you're uh, obviously dealing with without part of your small intestine, are a major way that you can your body can be in distress. But your body, make no mistake about it, your body is in distress, whether you know it or not. And uh, malnourishment is probably a big, uh, a big part of that. Got to move on. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. If you want more information, George, because you do have some, there's some complications. And I can't really address everything on, on the radio. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there and say George from the radio, and I'll take your call. I'll take, uh, I'll give you a call, and I'll help you out personally. All right. Thanks for your call, George. I appreciate it. Okay. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Back on the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben Emily in Illinois. What's going on? Yeah, hi Ben. Hello. Good to talk to you and good morning. Good morning. What's up? Uh, poison ivy. Get it? Po for you? You got poison ivy? Poison ivy planting shrubs pulling out some so-called weeds, July fourth, and um. You know, weeds are powerful medicine, by the way. Weeds honestly, are herbal medicine. What's that? Honestly, you know, I've been trying to look it up on the Internet, just what's going on in the subcutaneous level of my skin. You mean with your poison ivy? Yes. Okay, let's talk poison ivy real quick here. But I just wanted to mention that, that weeds, what we call weeds, are really powerful medicine to an herbalist. There's actually a weed called uh, uva ursi. Have you ever heard of this? Uva ursi bear claw? Uh, it's for women. It, Yes, exactly. It's got natural hydroquinone in it. We've been talking about skin lightening. I used to actually pick Uva Ursi and put it in my skin lightening gel when I was doing my compounding pharmacy. But anyway, poison ivy is a resin, or the, the itching that's associated with poison ivy is caused by a resin, a sticky substance. So if you want, it, uh, if you contact the shrub, the poison ivy bush, as soon as you touch the poison ivy, as soon as you get it, go into the kitchen and get some apple cider vinegar, or uh, if you don't have apple cider vinegar, some kind of oil, and rub it on the area that you touch, and that will dissolve the resin. In a pinch, you can use grain alcohol or vodka. If you want to go, uh, if you're not worried about toxicity, acetone, 
uh, works, paint thinner, paint remover, nail polish remover, all of these have solvents and I, I would personally, I wouldn't do that, but if you really, you, you know, you're in a bind and you touch the poison ivy or poison oak or sumac or whatever it was, it's a, it's a resin. You can't rinse it off. It's sticky. Uh, plants are really smart. They create, they make all kinds of compounds like gluten to keep people from touching them or eating them. Uh, and the resin is very sticky. So you're not gonna be able to rinse it off with water, but you can dissolve it with some kind of oil solvent or acetone or something along those lines. Now, once you have the poison ivy and once you have the reaction, you, you're really stuck. There's not much you could do, although you can soothe uh, and calm the, uh, calm the irritation or the inflammation down and, and help with the itching a little bit with, the, with calamine lotion, zinc oxide, or Benadryl cream. Benadryl cream is an antihistamine cream that slows down the production or the release of the itching chemicals that are released uh, as a reaction to the poison ivy. So using Benadryl cream, or even if you're really miserable, taking Benadryl orally, although that will knock you out a little bit. Calamine, zinc oxide, Benadryl cream, uh, and then sometimes people get benefits by using cortisone cream too, topically. Uh, as far as getting rid of the resin, you want grain alcohol or, or vinegar or oil. And then as I say, nail polish remover if you don't care about toxicity, turpentine even, or gasoline even for that matter, if you don't care about toxicity. Does that help you, Emily? Yeah, it does help. But I still have that odd smell coming from my skin. Actually, I got it head to toe. My eye... You got um, the poison ivy head to toe? Yes. And what were you doing, rolling around in there naked or something, Emily? Where, how would you get poison ivy head to toe? You must have been spreading the resin, scratching it. Uh, yeah, without yeah. gloves. And yeah, you see, poison, that's the, that's the way the stuff works. It's a resin, and when you scratch it, you actually spread the resin around. You can't see the resin. It's very thin. It's a very thin layer, but you're actually spreading it around. That's why it's so important not to scratch. But uh, once you contact, as soon as you contact the resin, getting it off your skin with um, some kind of oil solvent is the best way to take care of that. I'm going to move on, Emily. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. God bless you. Good luck with everything. Shane in North Carolina, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Shane? Shane, Shane? Something that you could address. Now, the, um, the, the first thing is that I, I called previously, and you had told me about skin tags and, um, you know, uh, basically what the root cause uh -huh. of them is. Okay. And um, so I, I do have that issue, which the cosmetics are getting better just with tea tree oil. However, I'm, skin I'm more concerned with the underlying Yes, cause, you should but, be. You should be. Skin tags are a sign. Mention, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The other thing I wanted to mention was that um, <clears throat> I had uh, listened to a recent interview with Dr. Drew, and he was talking about a liver cleanse and some stuff like that. I wanted uh, your take on various liver cleanse options. I, I don't buy into and liver cleanse. I, I don't buy into the whole liver cleanse thing. Liver, okay. The best way to do a liver cleanse is to stop eating, to stop putting stuff in that your liver has to process, and that's food mostly, drugs also. For the liver's processing all the poison we put in, and so stop putting the poison in, and the liver will cleanse itself. The problem I have with liver cleanse formulas and liver cleanse products is now your liver has more work to do. What is the organ that has to process all the, for, all the herbs and all the stuff in your liver cleanse? in your liver cleanse formula, the liver. Exactly. So you, got a, you got a liver that's overworked and you're trying to cleanse it by giving it more work to do. It just doesn't make sense to me. So that's my take on liver cleanse and I don't really recommend very many liver cleanse products, although liver cleansing by fasting is a great strategy. Um, so and that would be the, uh, the, um, the recommended uh, procedure. That's the way I would do it. No sugar, no drugs, no food. Give your liver a break. Yeah, because I, I definitely don't want to, you know, cross the line and end up getting an irreversible, you know, diabetes situation going. Well, you may have, um, diabetes is not irreversible, and you may already have diabetes, especially if you've got the skin tags. To the extent that you have the skin tags is the extent you have a sugar problem, and it's very common. It's almost impossible not to have a sugar problem, really, if you're, you know, if you're a standard American, whatever that is. Um, but skin tags, you want to consider to be a sign that the, your blood sugars is starting to get out of control. Any growths in the body are related to sugar slash insulin and estrogen. And I'm talking fibroids. I'm talking cysts. I'm talking tumors. I'm talking skin tags. I'm talking uh, uh, acne. 
any kind of growth, when cells are hyper, hyperactive, hyperdividing, hyperproliferating, wherever that occurs, focus on the hormone insulin slash sugar, because they're related, obviously, and estrogen. Now, you're uh, probably not going to have, you may have an issue with estrogen, but more than likely, you're looking at a blood sugar issue, Shane. So the only way to tell is to look for other symptoms. Do you, do you find yourself going low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, hypoglycemic? Do you find yourself craving sugar? Those are signs that you might oh, have yeah, a sugar Oh, yeah, I find problem. myself craving sugar. All right. Sure. Do you have a blood pressure thing? Do you, have you gained weight around your gut in your middle where you were, were skinny when you were a kid and then you started to gain weight when you were in your 30s oh, or yeah. 40s? All of oh, those yeah. are signs that your blood sugar is starting to get whacked out. I'd be treating myself as a diabetic, Shane. Regardless of what the doctor tells you, just treat yourself as a diabetic. Go ketogenic, meaning high protein, high fat, low sugar, and that means bread and pasta and you know, cereal and rice and potatoes and all the stuff we talk about all the time on this program, fruit juice, etc. And then use your diabetic or blood sugar stabilizing nutrients. The B vitamins, vitamin B3, niacin, vitamin B1, thiamine, chromium and vanadium, that's the Sweeties product that Dr. Wallach formulated. Magnesium, taurine, arginine. There's a whole slew of nutrients that are important for helping stabilize sugar. More fiber, uh, that can help slow down the release of sugar. Uh, and then more protein is a great way to wean yourself off of sugar. Shane, I'd be treating myself as a Excellent. diabetic if I were you. Could I, could I ask you one other quick question? Of course. Uh, I had my appendix taken out when I was 12. Okay. And okay. I was wondering if the, uh, I've heard some say that the appendix actually still do have a function, even though Absolutely. some people say that so is there anything that you recommend yes. that people who with, without an appendix do yes. differently? Yes, 100%. The appendix is a, a, a warehouse for probiotics, for good bacteria. So without an appendix, you're almost guaranteed to have digestive issues. And you've got to have digestive issues, Shane. If you don't know, if you, if you uh, uh, don't know it, look for them. Without an appendix, you're guaranteed to have digestive problems unless you take care of it. Uh, probiotics are a must, and fermented foods are a must for anybody who's had their uh, appendix taken out. And there's a major, major connection between good bacteria in the gut and blood sugar. And diabetes and dysbiosis, which is a fancy way of saying messed up gut bacteria, go hand in hand. Dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, precede diabetes and blood sugar problems. So guaranteed you got a uh, blood sugar problem, but you more than likely also have a digestive issue also as well. I call that the triangle of disease if you've listened to this program. Everybody has it when they have any kind of health challenge, degenerative health challenge behind it. There is a digestive problem, a blood sugar problem, and then an adrenal stress issue, which follows the digestion and, and the blood sugar issues. Does that make sense, Shane? Yes, it does. Okay, Thank my you. friend. Okay, good. Good luck with everything. All right, AJ in Indiana, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I got a problem like uh, my fingernails. They've got a real dark spot. I think I got, That's a, I'm not getting oxygen down there. Yeah, in you got a heart problem, sounds like. Uh, how old are you? Um, 62. Okay, do you have a history of heart disease or heart problems, circulatory problems anywhere? Not that I know of. I, you, I feel great. Uh, well, I might. have serious. I have retina pigmentosis. And I That's all it. circulation. Retina, retina uh, pigmentosa is a sign that the body's starting to break down, and behind all breakdown is dirty blood. I'm um, out of time. AJ, if you can call back tomorrow, I'll help you on the air. If you want, I'll help you personally. Send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and uh, I'll help you on the phone. But if you can call back tomorrow, we can help a lot of folks if we uh, take care of this on the air. Thanks for your call, AJ. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Check out my website, brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. And if you're interested in purchasing any of my skin health formulations, go to truthtreatments.com. Take a specially long look at the retinol gel. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a spectacular, beautiful, awesome day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.